welcome to another Cheeky Girl Creations DIY video. So today I will be making another video for Sean Petit's creative team from 2018 to 2019 and this is a Crash the Stash video so I'll be using a few products that I haven't used before and I'm not too sure what I'll be using yet, um, I'll just kind of run with it but I will definitely be using Sean's stencils of course and I got two new ones which I'll show you. One is called Flower Silhouette 3 and the other is Flower Silhouette 5. So like these are like a kind of poppy. And I can't remember the name of these flowers. Um, so I'll probably try to incorporate these because I haven't used them yet. So I shall put this into fast forward mode and I will speak to you in a voiceover so you know exactly what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to use these Derwent Graphic Line paint pens. As um, since I haven't used them for a while, I thought I would pull them out for this Crash the Stash video. And I'm going to use some papers from my mixed media subscription boxes. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll see that I'm on a bit of a mission to finish off these papers, and I have loads. So I'm trying to use them in like almost every video I make. So I'm picking out some blues and greens um, for the sky and the field. I thought I would like make a poppy field. Um, oh, and I also got some teal and gold tissue paper as well. So I'm just picking out those papers, um, tearing them off. I really do like the texture of a teared edge on like um, paper. So that's how I like to um, use instead of cutting it. Because like a hard edge is harder to blend onto your page, especially if you're not going to add a lot of texture. Um, and I wasn't too sure how much texture I was going to add. I knew I wanted lots on this page, but I just wasn't sure how much. So I'm adding the tissue paper first and I'm going to tear the papers into slightly smaller pieces um, and place it in a few areas around the sky. And there were some hard edges but um, I, you could don't really notice them at the end um, since I do put so much layers on. And I'm using my favourite palette knife uh, to glue things on or like to spread chalk primer or something. Um, if you've seen my previous videos you see I always use it but sadly while I was making this video it broke and you'll see that in a little bit. Um, I was really gutted about that. So now I'm going to have to find a new favourite palette knife. But I have had it for a long time so I guess it's expected. So I finished off with the sky and I've moved on to the grass now. And you can see um, that they're, they're all like slightly different patterns but by the time I add all the color and the texture you're not going to notice that at all you're just going to notice um, the texture from the papers not the, um, the print and I also had these paper doilies so I just added a little bit um, just to add just some extra texture because I really do like the um, texture from paper doilies and before that dries I'm just going to add a layer of chalk primer and it's a very messy layer and it's kind of thick in some areas just to blend everything together, bring it together and push the background back. And you can see um, it broke while I was trying to clean it. I was really sad. So sad. Um, so yeah, so now I'm adding a bird. I think it's supposed to be a swallow or swift, so I'm going to call it that. And I'm using this palette knife. I really like this palette knife um, for stenciling, especially using texture paste because it's a nice flat edge so I added that bird in I didn't want to add like more than one just so that the sky wouldn't look empty and I'm going to pull out a mask and add that in to maybe make it look like clouds or something um I just thought it'd be nice to just have a little bit of extra texture in the sky because um I knew there was going to be a lot of um elements like in the grass like where the poppies are so I didn't want the sky to be too plain and I'll just use, I'm putting some texture paste over the page. And I felt that the background still was too dark. So I'm just going to go over quickly with a layer of white paint. Um, I, that's by Crawf Crawford and Black. Just to push the background a bit, um, back a little bit. And then I will dry that with a heat gun. <clears throat> and once that was all dry, it's time to add the colour. So I'm picking out some blues, greens, um, some browns and yellow. And of course all the blues are in the sky and then the green, brown and yellow um, are for the grass. And I'm just kind of pumping it down. That's what I like about paint pens. You can get quite a lot of paint out of them, especially when you do that. I'm just putting that in a few areas um, of the sky. And then I'm going to spray some water and you can see it spreads out really nicely. 
and I'm just using the brush to get in between where I knew it wouldn't really get in very well especially like behind the swallow and I was avoiding the swallow at first but then I thought actually I want the swallow to be the same color I'll just make it stand out later on and then after moving the page a little bit adding a little bit more dark to make the swallow stand out I'm going to let that air dry okay so once that was dry um i added some actually no sorry before it dried i'm going to add some white i didn't actually end up being able to see any of the white which was a shame but i was just experimenting to see what it would look like so it's not too bad and i do add some white just to brighten the sky up later on anyway and i'm using a brush so i don't get any of that um paint on my white paint pen because i would be able to wipe it off but having to worry about cleaning it would be a bit of a pain so I decided to use that small brush instead and I was just smushing that paint onto um, a palette I had off camera okay so once that was dry then I'll go in with the grass I'm putting quite a lot of um, yellow because I didn't want it to be too dark it does end up being a little bit dark but you don't really notice it um, at the end and again I'm doing the same thing adding that splash of water spreading it around with a brush then I'll move it around again with the page and that create I found created a really nice texture. I liked how a lot of it was like kind of going um, vertically. And I had these tags that just had really plain backgrounds and I like to give tags and like online orders as a thank you for your order. So um, I was just adding some of that excess paint on the tags as well, just so um, they would look a little bit more interesting and I finished them off later on. And I was going to add some white again in the grass just to see if it would work. Again, it didn't, but it's all good. Um, it's all about experimenting, really. So instead, I just ended up adding some brush strokes to make it look like grass. And then again, I let that air dry. I didn't want it to like move around when I put the heat, heat gun on it. And I added some of that color to the swallow to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, so now that that is dry, and it looks quite shiny actually, which is quite nice, um, I'm adding some white, and I'm going to use a paper towel to stencil through. When I did my first Creative Team video, I didn't actually have any makeup sponges to use, so I use a paper towel, and it creates a really nice texture, quite soft and subtle. Um, so I thought I would do that, so I'm going over the... Um, bits I stenciled earlier on and then a few areas as well in the sky and you can see how much that's brightened it up and on the areas I stenciled I made it brighter and you'll see in photos how like interesting the texture looks at the end and I also went over the bird I felt like I needed to lighten it up a little bit so it could stand out some more from the sky and now for the poppies now I'm doing it in the same way paper towel white paint um, this is all that's from Crawford Black. Um, just in case you're wondering, I'm using the same white paint and I'm putting the larger poppies at the back, not sorry, at the back, at the front of the page, because if something's close to you, it looks bigger. And then the smaller poppies um, to the back of the page, because just to get that perspective right. And I just put like a few, um, I think I ended up with five poppies on the page. And I felt like it was still a bit empty, so I'm going to use that seed pod that you can see there. And I'll be twisting and turning it so it doesn't look like the same thing. I also did that with the poppies, just kind of twisting them slightly so it looks like they're facing um, in different directions. And once that was done, I did add a second layer off camera so it would be a lot brighter. And you can see there, because what I wanted to do then was outline it. And I do end up like blending the colours in on the seed pods like on this first one with my paintbrush but I actually felt that it would be cooler if it was just outlined and just had a really nice sketchy loose feel to it so I decided to stick with that instead and I'm using yellow and green for the seed pods um, yellow where the light would hit it so there will be highlights and then green where not so much light would hit it so that's where like the shadows would be um, I thought that would look Quite nice and then I wouldn't have to worry about having to go in and add too much shadows and highlights because I've already done that with my color and I'm doing the seed pods and like the stems of the flowers first because um, 
once I did the flowers, I knew the flowers might cover up some of the seed pods anyway, but I wanted the seed pods to be like in the background. So now I'm using two different colors of red. Um, I'm putting the brighter red, of course, where the sun would hit, um, darker red where it wouldn't. And then I'm going to use a brown and blue for the middle. You can see very sketchy there, kind of adding like the texture of the petals as well in a few different areas. I'm, and I'm trying to add it so that it looks, so you can kind of see which direction the petals will be um, pointing or facing. I'm adding that brown and I was stippling the brown so you could kind of see the, the texture like of the middle of the flower. Then I added that blue so it would look a little bit black because like the blue and the brown creates a really nice dark colour. And I'm going to do that with all the flowers and you can see some of the flowers didn't come out very well when I stenciled them. So I'm just having to use the paint pens to bring that detail back. And sorry the lighting um, was changing a little bit. The light was kind of escaping me so I had to go get a light and turn it on so it looked a bit strange um, at that point. And while I was doing the middle of the flower you'll see in a little bit. A bit of an accident happened um, when I went to add the blue. It just added this humongous blob of paint. So I dabbed it up really quickly, went over the middle again and some of that petal. And I thought, well, let's try again. Maybe that was just a fluke, but it happened again. So I decided just to mop that up, um, go over that seed pod and then add some blue blobs in some other areas of the page. And this is a great way to make a mistake look as if it was planned. So you can see now it looks as if I was planning to do that and no one will know that actually that was a mistake. So I'm carrying on with my flowers, adding all those sketchy bits. Um, the light red was a little bit um, dry so I did have to pump it a couple times just to make sure that it was coming out um, faster I should say um, and then that did look a lot better. And I found another paint pen I could add to the middle and again it was just a little bit splooshy it's as if I haven't used them for a while so now that the paint's flowing it's as if the nib can't hold it back or something I'm not too sure so but that was fine I didn't really mind because I just did make it look as if it was planned by adding those other blue um, bits and uh, that flower I had to add a lot of the, t um, the detail back in because I didn't stencil that one very much it did just look like a white blob um, but it looked good at the end and by then you can see that the lighter paint um, pen, red paint pen is a lot stronger now. So I didn't have to like go over too many times. And I was adding blue but I was being very careful when I was doing so. And now I'm adding some yellow just to make the flowers um, look a little bit brighter. I felt that they were looking a bit dark so I wanted to do that. And I did, I was really happy with how that turned out. I've never really done anything like this before. Um, so I was extremely happy that it turned out so well. And I think I'll have to do that again with something else um, on another journal page. And I'm adding some brown to those seed pods and the stems because I felt that they had disappeared into the background a little bit. So that brown really helped them pop um, out. And it all kind of grounds it. Like when you add a dark color it grounds the page and then when you add a light color it then makes everything pop so I will be adding some white later on once everything's dry because I don't want to ruin my gel pen so I'm going to work on the bird now um I just felt like there wasn't something right so I thought maybe I just need to make it pop so I'm adding some um white for highlights and I'm going to add some black um and to ground a little bit and it did help make it pop a bit but I still wasn't happy with it and you'll see in a little bit once I've added that black I just felt that the color was a bit off so I'm going to add some blue and then I'm going to blend that in with my finger and then of course it looked a bit messy because my finger wasn't very accurate so I was going in with some white um, just to add some more detail and a big splish of white came out but actually I was happy about that because when I went in and blended that in with my brush, I instantly liked the colour. So I went back in with my brush um, with the black paint and the white and I was really happy with how it turned out. So that was that. The bird was all finished. And now um, I'm going to add some splashes. And then I'm going to edge the page with my Memento ink pad. 
I really like the size of this. I think it's really perfect for things like this. It's a lot nice and flexible. You can get into those kind of like awkward bits. And that just helps ground the page and add a nice border. So now I'm going to sign the page and add all my highlights, doodles and sketches just to brighten the page up and finish it off. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're watching on my channel, please do check out Sean's. Like that video and subscribe to her channel if you're watching on Sean's. Please do, um, again, subscribe to her channel and check me out as well. I have a whole bunch of other videos on my channel as well. And please don't forget to check out the other creative team members. They have some gorgeous makes as well. So thanks again for watching and please join me again for another arty adventure. Bye.